I cannot get that song out of my head. Totally. I'm going again. I love the mountains. I love the sun so bright. I love precision. I love the stars at night. I love the whole world. So many things to see. I love the lemurize. I love the future. I love when humans fly. I love the whole world. No place I'd rather be. Boombiata, 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 boombiata. Still dirty. Still loving it. I love to blast off. I love adrenaline. I love the Big Bang. I love where air is thin. I love the whole world. And being part of it. Boombiata, boombiata, boombiata. and welcome to this week's episode of Little Suckers on Discovery Channel. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Sandra Go, and I'm a medical practitioner, parasitologist and also your host for this week's episode. Now joining me are four other doctors and parasitologists and researchers from different parts of the world and we've been invited to come here to the Philippines to actually discuss and to find the cause of the current outbreak of schistosomiasis here in Davao City, Philippines. So this is where we're staying and uh, we've just reached here yesterday actually. And now without further ado, we'd just like to begin with the introductions of the team. First we have Dr. Brendan Nau Torres from France and he's currently partnered with Lab Worms, a parasitological institute that tries to find cures for infections. We also have Anka Lee from Italy and she's the research assistant working for Merck, Sharp and Dome. We also have from the number one universe, from the number one hospital in Tamil Nadu, which is Apollo Hospital, we have Dr. Saumya Ramesh, who is also the leading lady in parasitological diagnosis in the whole of southern India. Part of the Discovery Channel team, we have Dr. Siva Rupini Sugumaran, who is also one of the key researchers in Discovery Channel. And as for me, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Sandra Go, also author of Parasite Free and Parasitological Breakthroughs. So how do you know you have schistosomiasis? Actually, we have Dr. Torres paying a visit to this hospital, which happens to have one of the highest cases of schistosomiasis here in Davao City. Dr. Torres, what are the signs and symptoms of schistosomiasis? You know, also a few patients may have minor skin irritation when the cercuria enters the skin. Most people don't develop symptoms until the eggs develop about one to two months. And they have fever, chills, cough, and muscle aches can begin within one to two months of infection. However, most people have no symptoms at this early phase of infection. Unfortunately, a few patients develop acute schistomiasis, which is also known as Katayama fever, during this one to two month period and their symptoms resemble those for serum sickness or as follows. Uh, fever, abdominal pain, bloody diarrhea or blood in the stools, cough, malaise, headache, rash, and body aches. The majority of people who develop chronic schistomiasis have uh, symptoms developed months or years after the initial exposure to the parasites. So what about the majority of the people who develop chronic schistosomiasis? The majority of people who develop chronic schistomiasis have symptoms developed months or years after the initial exposure to the parasites, and such as abdominal pain, abdominal swelling, bloody diarrhea, blood in the urine, shortness of breath, weakness, chest pain, seizures, and paralysis. So connecting to the situation here in the Philippines, how can we be sure that someone is someone has contracted schistosomiasis? We can diagnose schistomiasis by uh, 
doing thick fecal smears or concentrated urine tests to find out if there are schistosoma eggs present in the samples. Uh, to confirm this, we take measurements such as the blood test. That's all. If a person is infected with schistosoma, schistomiasis, then uh, the eggs are present in the samples and they're positive. That's all. Okay. The adult have a larger sucker capping at the anterior end, a ventral sucker and a gonophore at the end of the posterior of the fluke. The male is shorter and broader while the female has a long and slender in shape. We managed to identify that Davao River is one of the main sites of transmission and also infection of schistosomiasis here in Davao City. So our squad, headed by Dr. Salmia Ramesh and assisted by Mr. Pandian Jevil, our tour guide, decides to take a trip down to Davao River to study and analyze the water samples in this river so that we will be able to make a more solid conclusion to the cause and how to curb schistosomiasis here in the Philippines. More often you can see people swimming, uh, bathing and washing near freshwater sources. So why are we talking about this freshwater source? This is because um, uh, this parasite is transmitted through snails from freshwater. Snails of a class called Oncomelonia. Now let's take a look at the life cycle of this parasite. So first what happens is uh, when people are working uh, near freshwater sources, um, uh, these free swimming circuitry, uh, they penetrate through the skin and uh, they are thus transmitted into uh, their hosts. The hosts can be us humans or dogs, monkeys, um, carabaos, cattle, etc. So uh, once they penetrate to the skin, they make their way to the veins and move to the heart and the lungs and eventually they, they go to the liver. Um, once they go to the liver and get the resting place, these circuitry, uh, they mature to form adult male and female worms. So they form male and female pairs and eggs are produced. Uh, this takes about five to seven days and uh, the eggs are released. These eggs pass through the feces or it can also be through the urine. Um, and when these eggs, and you know it's very easy to uh, get back to fresh water when people urinate into the rivers. So when these eggs uh, come in contact with fresh water, they release a free swimming Miracidia. So these Miracidia, they look for these oncomelania snails and they can again penetrate to the snails either to the head or their foot. So again it's easy for them to transmit to the snails and into human beings. So the transmission is very simple because fresh water sources, uh, we more commonly be, see people working in uh, fresh water sources. So once they get into snails, uh, in the digestive tract, the Miracidia is then, um, then forms the first stage sporosis and then the second stage sporosis and eventually circuitry, which are released by the snails. These free swimming circuitry again find their way into uh, to come in contact with skin so that they can penetrate and continue their life cycle. So this is the life cycle of Schistosoma japanicum. The treatment for Schistosomiasis is actually pretty simple. It is an annual dose of Praziquantel. Praziquantel basically works by rapidly disintegrating these worms, allowing the host immune system to attack the worm. But sadly in the Philippines, not many pharmacies actually sell Praziquantel. Even the store that I'm standing right in front does not sell Praziquantel. Mercury Drug Store is in fact a very famous branch in the Philippines and very strangely they do not sell Praziquantel. This could be one reason why schizosomiasis is actually very prevalent in the Philippines. So now that we know more about Schistosoma japonicum and Schistosomiasis, here is a short segment about how to prevent schistosomiasis and uh, how easily we can do it. So, of course, the first thing would be to create awareness. And uh, actually, that is our main objective in creating this show. So, but, but this can actually be challenging, especially because we need to disseminate information in rural areas. And also, it's difficult to change customs of people like uh, going, to a, going to a man who's been bathing in the river all his life, telling him to stop doing that will be hard. 
but um, we can we can do um, steps that are easier, such as for example managing fecal matter, human fecal waste, um, in a more organized manner, like uh, especially not using them for night soil, because this can lead to uh, the further spread of schistosomiasis. Also, um, of course, uh, prevent con prevent contact with. Um, water that is infested with um, Oncomillenia snails and that also have been contaminated with uh, fecal matter because Oncomillenia snails plus human waste or fecal matter is equals to schistosomiasis infections. So, um, but of course if you have to uh, get in contact with the water, you can also use uh, sacaricidal ointments and also sacarial uh, repellents. And also there is this, uh, this, is, um, there is this cream, lotion-like, which has a dimeticon base and actually uh, provides up to 48 hours of protection. So you can use that as well. And that's a wrap for Little Suckers and that's how you bust them. We'd like to take this opportunity also to thank some very special people who have made this project a success. Firstly, we'd like to thank all the doctors and the parasitologists who have come from all parts of the world to help us with this. Firstly, Dr. Brandon Torres, Dr. Samia Ramesh from Chennai, Ang Kai Lee, Dr. Siva, and myself. And we'll also like to thank uh, Professor Elsa Baron, who has been our advisor in making this project. We'd also like to thank our tour guide, Mr. Pandian Jevil, who was kind enough to bring us around Davos City and specifically to the river where we did our study. So uh, this is a wrap and uh, this is us from Davao in Philippines uh, trying to create awareness not only in Philippines but to all parts of the world thanks to Discovery Channel. Thank you. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Sandra Go, and I would like to thank you once again. Illuminate your mind with the Discovery Channel. And maybe I have been moved on since then